Good morning. This is a video on how to um, create a relief sculpture out of a lump of clay. What we did already <coughs> is we looked through, found um, a photograph that we wanted to replicate in a relief sculpture. Now, relief sculpture is basically um, a sculpture that's flat in the back and stands out. Ours are going to be about three inches um, in depth from the highest point to the base of our sculpture. Um, so after we found a picture, we redrew to about five inch by five inch format. Um, some of us have tall skinny sculptures and those are about three by six, either long or high. Um, <coughs> I decided to do this fish. After we um, redrew or reprinted our photo, um, to that size, we also found online a side view. This really helps us get the depth that we need in our sculpture that we would, might not necessarily um, be able to figure out. Um, there's a student that's doing an owl, and the owl's face is completely <laughs> flat, <laughs> and I would have never guessed it unless I saw that side picture. So we were laughing about it yesterday. Um, so what do we do first? Take a lump of clay and throw it on a small board that fits into a Ziploc bag. For this project, we're using Ziploc bags. I used to use um, recycled grocery bags, but I found that students struggled closing the bag and, um, and creating an airtight atmosphere, and that they'd come back over the weekend and they're um, sculpture would be completely dried out. So since this is, um, you know, our only clay project in art survey class, we use Ziploc bags and that completely creates an airtight atmosphere, which is going to be important for our relief sculptures. For, so we can work on these things for um, a week, week and a half or so. Next thing you want to do is grab about a fifth size of clay and um, create a height, here's a side view, create a height um, that's about three inches, that's going to be the tallest area of your sculpture, okay? Next thing you're going to do is grab a couple of tools. I'm going to move this aside for a minute just so I can describe um, tools, but I, you know, I talked about these tools a little bit yesterday, so if you were not here yesterday on the Tuesday Lab Day, take a look. This is called a fettling knife. Fettling knife. Um, it's dull on one side, sharp on the other side, and this is a um, a potter's knife. Okay. Um, just be sure that you can identify what side is dull and what side is sharp, so you're not struggling too hard to cut with a wrong side of the knife. This is called a loop tool. Loop tools come in all different sizes and shapes. <coughs> I specify um, the sizes as a regular size loop tool, which is about the size of my finger, and a ribbon loop tool, which is much, much smaller. So ribbon, it just kind of creates like a very tiny hole. Here are some other tools that I'd like you to learn, yet we don't use them much um, in this class. We use them more often in um, ceramics class and 3D class, but they are available to you. This is called a needle tool, and a needle tool would work great um, if you wanted to draw out um, basic areas of your sculpture so you knew where to add clay on or subtract clay. It's like, think of it as a drawing tool. For instance, if I wanted to draw out a mouth, I could kind of carve that in and then hollow out with a loop tool. This is called a metal rib. Now, be very, very careful because um, a metal rib can cut you like a knife because it's basically a thin, very thin sheet of metal. It's used to create 
different um, smooth surfaces on your clay. So say I wanted to remove this lump here. See how that's lumpy bumpy? If I want to remove that or just smooth it, I can bend this metal rib with my thumb by putting pressure in the center and just smooth this thing right out. So easy to do. Really, really nice. So all of these tools are available to you, but at first we're going to be focusing on how we use the fettling knife and then the loop tool. <coughs> It's important that you have both your photograph and your um, drawing to scale if your photograph isn't to scale set up in front of you. So that's not in the picture plane right now in the movie, but just know that I have it out in front of me. That's going to be my resource. I'm not worried about any like skinny details right now like uh, fish fins. You're going to wait until the end to put those on. Reason being, they're just going to dry and uh, break off if you put them on in the beginning. Or the weight of your damp paper towel will make them kind of like sag <laughs> and mush. <laughs> okay, now for cutting the planes. I realize that this, the mouth, which is going to be right here, is my highest plane. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut, um, I'm going to think about the back spine of the fish, which is here, and I'm going to cut going back into space from the mouth back to my board with my settling knife. These planes, um, which, you know, obviously I don't mean the kind of plane that flies in the air, but I mean um, a line in space goes from the mouth back. So here we go. And at some point, you know, like the tail, for instance, is just going to be a flat plane of clay because um, this is only going to be a three inch relief sculpture. So I'm going to add that onto the back of my tail. Make sure that you don't overhandle the clay. If you do, it's going to start cracking a little bit and then you have problems. As we speak, if your clay is cracking, feel free to go get a brand new wet piece of clay out of the bag. That shouldn't really happen. Next step is um, I'm going to hollow out the mouth. May, I would suggest that you make the mouth solid if you have an open mouth and then hollow it out. I'm drawing out with a needle tool a circle first that represents what I'm going to hollow out. Notice this is the base of my tile. I'm not creating any undercuts yet because I don't want the sculpture to collapse upon itself. Just allow the base of the clay um, to stick to the tile for now. Now this is how you use a loop tool. I'm going to take the loop and scoop out the clay. This is actually really fun. This clay, because it's in the inside of my sculpture, is really soft and wet, and I'm just going to boil it up right away and put it aside so it can be used.
Whenever you're working with clay, you want to go thick to thin gradually. Imagine if I pinched this mouth so the whole thing was like really, really thin. There's a good chance it could either start to crack or collapse on itself. So this, the whole inside of this mouth, or whatever you do, should be about a quarter of an inch. I wouldn't go thin in that, thinner than that. However, you know, I was showing people how to make leaves, how to make uh, flower petals. You want to create the illusion of thinness with, by blah, blah, blah. <laughs> but at the same time, keep your clay thick at the base. So always think clay support thick to thin, okay? Just make the edge create that illusion of um, thickness without making everything super, super thin. It's so, so sad um, to me when um, art survey students create um, a thin leaf and the whole thing's maybe like an eighth of an inch thick and it just, every time it's just gonna crack. And um, so I just try to really enforce the fact that, um, you know, keep your sculpture um, thicker than that, you know, keep it, um, have, um, you know, start maybe like a quarter of an inch and then go thinner. So check it out. Keeping my picture as a guide, I'm just going to pinch the edge of the lip. If the edge of your leaves, flower petals, um, mouth, whatever you're doing, starts to crack a little bit, feel free to use a sponge just to wet the edge of the mouth or the edge of the clay. Don't wet the whole sculpture because um, you need the support, you know? Your sculpture needs to be supported, okay? Now remember, this is all about creating planes. So I'm going to use my needle tool and kind of redraw the mouth and then we're going to talk about eye. We're just doing um, structure today and tomorrow. Um, we're not doing texture unless you've been here every day and a little bit uh, ahead. I'm using my fettling knife. I use my needle tool to create the outline, and I'm using my fettling knife to create the plane. Super cool, right? So, um, Also, the key is, if you're creating something organic, like an animal, a fish, a flower, a tree, then use your fingers. If you're creating something, you know, along with the tools, if you're creating something geometric, like a car or a building, your fingers should barely touch the clay. Why? Because an organic tool creates an organic subject. A geometric tool creates a geometric subject. Now, I'm going to focus, just because of time, on this side. And now, I'm going to show you my favorite thing, which is how to create an eyeball. Feel free to use um, a lump of clay to raise your, your um, board if you're in my situation where the eyes aren't facing straight up at you. Okay. Next thing is figure out the placement. And I know this eye is going to be right here. And just draw a mark that represents where that eye is going to be. Pick a loop tool that is the same size of your eye. And scoop out all the clay at once. Here we go. I'm creating, how cool, an eye socket. Now this is the thing. Eyes don't, um, fish don't have lids, but you can use some, um, 
kind of, you know, artistic license on this. I created the hole. Now that clay that I scooped out of the hole, I'm going to create a sphere with. Just by rolling the clay in my hands. I'm going to stick it right in the middle. And I'm going to make a bottom lid. And then I'm going to make a top lid. Now, of course, I could just um, make a coil and make not two lids, but make um, a circle around the entire eye. But considering, I don't think anyone in here is doing a fish. Most people in here are doing eyes that have lids. And plus, it gives the fish a little bit more personality, I think, to have lids. Now the top lid. Notice I'm not scratching and attaching with slip this clay. As long as your clay is wet, uh, fresh out of the bag, um, and going on to clay that's fresh out of the bag, you don't even have to scratch and attach. Notice by Friday we'll be scratching and attaching because our clay will start to, grass, to dry out a little bit. Then I'm going to take my fettling knife and smooth on that top plane. Just like that. You don't have to do the eye, make the eye exactly my way. This is just how I like to make it. It's kind of fun. Okay. Once, and notice I really only worked the right side, this side of my sculpture, but once the top is all kind of done, you can work on the undercut area. And notice there's a lot of clay and I'm sort of losing a form. Well here, once all the top of my sculpture is done, I can cut away this underneath part here. See that? Next, we'll be experimenting with detail and texture. I'm going to make a fin for my fish. Ooh, I'm going to make gills first. Just by cutting away some of the clay. There we go. I'm going to make a fin for my fish, and I'm going to do it the same way I would make a leaf. I'm going to take a brand new, so it's not cracking. I'm going to ball, ball up on my scrap first. Ball up your scrap, and then don't overtouch it. Just leave it aside. See this ball? I would just run this right under the faucet, and then put it in the brand new clay bag. By tomorrow, it's going to be soft and perfect to use. Little trick. I'm going to grab a lump of clay, quickly roll it in my hands, I'm using the side picture of my fin to help me with the shape um, of that fin. It's something like this, and I'm only going to pinch the edge. Notice how the center is thick. And I'm going to leave it just like that. Then I have to think about where this fin is going to be attached 
and you can apply this to your leaf, to um, any delicate part of your sculpture. My fin is going to be attached to a curved side of my fish, like right about here. I'm going to smooth it. And then create the texture on top. Now edges are going to be important. Anything thin, I want to make sure that I'm just using my settling knife and removing it from the board at this point. The fun thing about art is, you know, you can really be creative. Maybe I want, since I have this big, huge mouth, maybe I want to put something fun in here. I don't know. These are going to be wall hangings. So maybe I want to put like a little hook and then like hang it in the kitchen and put a towel, like a little hand towel or something hanging from it. That might be fun. And then the hook, there'd be a relationship between the hook and the idea of a fish getting caught. I don't know. Always think about that extra thing you can do to make your sculpture special. And imagine your sculpture, you know, hanging in your room or hanging in your house. And for it, for now, that's it. So.